Hey Geeky Pastimes here and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing Rocket Arena. If you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you want to see me playing some of these games please go check me out on Twitch, I'm Geeky Pastimes over there. So I've had Rocket Arena for a few days now and I've been able to play on live servers for the last couple of days. This is definitely an early review, I don't want to sort of give anyone the wrong impression. I've spent a lot of time in every game mode but I haven't been doing this with a communicating team or anything and there hasn't been enough time in the game for a kind of meta to establish. There's still plenty of people who have no idea what's going on in games so that obviously makes things a little bit different. These are sort of early impressions on whether or not the game's worth it and kind of I feel like I've seen enough of the game already to give it a decent review. But if you disagree with that that's absolutely fine this might not be the review for you. So getting into it Rocket Arena is a really weird game. It's a game that was announced over a year ago, but then was kind of re-announced when EA picked it up and featured it at their EA 2020 event. Superficially, it's kind of a third-person 3v3 hero shooter, um, but when you describe it like that, it makes people think, okay, maybe it's going to be have things like Overwatch or Gears of War or something like that. But it actually ends up being a little bit more like Smash Brothers than anything else. If I try and explain how a game works, a normal game of Rocket Arena is probably the knockout mode. I think that's the kind of default version, and there's actually a playlist where you can just play knockout mode. In that, two teams of three fight against each other on one of the ten small arenas, and I don't mean small arenas in a bad way, the arenas are pretty cool, and you have to try and be the first team to reach 20 knockouts. You get a knockout by literally knocking another player off the stage, Smash Brothers style. Usually you do this by raising their damage meter to full and then hitting them once more to send them flying away. If your damage meter is at full, you can't do anything when you've been hit away. You'll just bounce around the map until you bounce out of it. You can kill people by knocking them out of the map just by pushing them back when they're near the edge. But people don't tend to hang around right on the edge of the map. Um, sometimes they fall off accidentally, but that's about it. So most of the time you'll be raising their damage meter and smashing them away like that. It's a little bit counterintuitive at first, usually because in games I'm trying to pick off enemies with the lowest health bars, but in this it's actually the reverse because it's not a health bar, it's a damage bar, so you're actually trying to target the ones who have full bars. If your damage bar gets filled up, if you can avoid damage for a few seconds, it'll actually go back down to zero, like recharging health, so you just need to kind of avoid things for a little while, which is a little bit trickier said than done. To help you avoid tax though, you can dodge every five seconds or so, this kind of makes your character spin around a little bit and um, makes you invincible for a little while and also lets you regain control if you've been knocked back. As long as you don't have a full damage bar, you'll be able to kind of break out of the stun. It's a really, really useful skill to have and it actually massively increases the skill ceiling because when you see good players playing, they use the dodge quite a lot and they know when to use it at, to get, have like the most effect and they can turn around fights really quickly just by dodging a barrage of attacks and then using their own while the other person's sort of reloading or waiting for their um, sort of abilities to recharge. Your attacks are different for every single character. So there's 10 characters in total, and all of them are super unique and interesting. I think they're really good. They've all got kind of very obvious influences. There's like a pirate and a skinny ice queen, and then like a sort of um, Incan warrior type person, and uh, someone who, like a kid who likes playing with gadgets and stuff. They're not like the most inventive, like, you, oh my god, I've never seen a character like this. But they've got a lot of character and they're really well designed. I think like I can imagine people warming to each of them. Each character has their own kind of main attack, so one of them will have like a normal rocket launcher, one of them will have one that's more like a shotgun, one will have more that's like a grenade launcher, things like that. Um, and they all have two different special attacks as well. And these are all really, really different and they're really good. I know when I talk about special attacks, some people are going to think of it being like Overwatch, but they're not team-based like a lot of the Overwatch ones are. There's not really any special attacks that I've been able to work out are actually very useful to use with a teammate. Instead, it's all pretty much about helping you out a little bit and defending yourself, or about attacking the enemies in some way. You can't like heal any of your friends or anything like that. Um, one of the characters can like turn into a manta ray, splatoon style, like squidding along the floor, and then they erupt up with an AOE knockback, which is pretty cool. One of them can like call artillery in, like a big missile or a bunch of smaller missiles. One can throw a teleporter and then teleport to it later. All the abilities seem really different, and they really do change the way you play. Like playing as each character after you've had a couple of games with them is completely different. 
On top of all of this, there are pickups in the arena as well, so you get power-ups, like you can increase your dodge or your speed, or you can attract nearby rockets into a kind of magnetic clump. Um, there's one really cool one where it's kind of a gift, and after you pick it up, you can then give an item to everyone on your team, which is really powerful in some of the modes. The movement is pretty unique for a game like this as well. Each character has a triple jump, not just a double jump, um, except for one character which has a jetpack instead. And you can freely rocket jump off the ground or even up walls without risking your own health. This is pretty cool because if you do get knocked off the edge but you've still got a bit of health, you can actually kind of climb up the wall. Some of the characters, because their weapon shoots so regularly and their reload is pretty short, can actually bounce around the outside of the map, which is useful in some of the modes where you need to hold on to something. Um, since all of your weapons are kind of different types of rocket launchers and everyone's pretty much airborne all the time and the rocket launchers have really slow projectile speeds it actually becomes this sort of really complex ballet of kind of trying to predict where your enemies are going to be so you can shoot them while also avoiding shots yourself if you have really good reflexes you could probably do really well in this game Altogether, all of those kind of mechanics add up to something that feels a lot more like a sort of cross between Smash Brothers and Unreal Tournament more than anything else. It's got that kind of floaty jumping around and taking long shots like Unreal Tournament, but also that kind of frantically trying to stay on the map and trying to avoid taking as much damage as you can like in Smash Brothers. It is chaos to start with, but very quickly, I think after maybe three or four games, you get a really good sense of when you're in a bad situation, when enemies are in a bad situation, and trying to manipulate the map to make sure that you are in the best possible um, position to attack your enemies. It ends up being really sort of strategic, and I quite like it. Other than the knockout mode, there's a bunch of other game modes. So there's a King of the Hill one where you have to kind of um, just hold these big rockets when they appear for a while. There's a treasure hunt mode where you have to sort of alternately hold onto a treasure chest and run around with it while it's giving you coins. Or then you go into a different mode where you have to try and pick up loads of coins and it keeps swapping between the two until one team's got like 250 coins. Um, there's a rocket ball mode, which I think might end up being the most interesting one, where a ball spawns centrally in the map and you have to kind of rush over there and then carry it to the opponent's gold score. Or you can throw it, but the throwing's pretty bad. Um... I think that's quite interesting because some of the characters seem kind of useless for it. Like if you've got knockback or shields or some movement ability, then you've got a massive advantage in that mode. Um, the characters that have a really good movement ability like teleports and stuff, that gets disabled if you're holding the ball. But you can kind of start using some of those abilities like one of them has this sort of hoverboard that she can fly on. You can start using it just before you pick up the ball and then carry on using it with the ball, which let me win a few rounds in a kind of cheesy way really. I do think it's going to be interesting because the rounds are quick, they're short, they're really easy to read, so it'd be a fun thing to watch. And there's quite a lot of strategy going on. I was playing by myself just with randoms I wasn't communicating with. But I think if there were three of you all communicating, you could do really well in that. And there could be some cool tournaments and things like that going on with that mode. There's also this co-op mode where you fight off waves of bots, but it's pretty terrible. It's really insultingly easy, even without communicating. I've tried it twice and won both times. Like, I think none of us died once, and I died once the second time. Um, it feels a bit like a practice mode more than anything. So, so far so good. Rocket Arena is a fun little team-based arena game. There's some real depth to it. There's a high skill ceiling. It even looks pretty cool. There's sort of cartoonish graphics, but I think they look really good. There's some good art design. There's some really inventive settings for the maps um the abilities all look pretty distinctive i had no problem reading what was going on or who was attacking me or what was happening at all the music's awesome i really like the music even the menu music's really good i've sort of sat there when matchmaking's taken a while and it's been pretty cool just listening to it there are some things that i'm not happy about with it in terms of the actual game i'm not really convinced by the artifacts there's the kind of these items that you can get that give you a passive bonus and they do affect different things like dodge or speed or reload speed or um how quickly you can move or stuff like that and they all need to be unlocked and then they need to be leveled up which means if you're a new player you're just a worse version of your character than someone who's been playing it for a while um, and that seems kind of unfair in a game like this like imagine in rocket league if your car got faster the more you played so when you were new to the game everyone was just faster than you that would be rubbish um so i'm not a massive fan of those at all you don't buy them or anything like that it's not paid to win it's just something where at the beginning you're going to have quite a big disadvantage compared to people who have the artifacts all unlocked already the really big problems with this game all come from the marketing and it's kind of hard not to blame ea for this the game's not really been advertised at all like nearly everyone i've spoken to about it hadn't heard of it at all and it's come out today um it's clearly built as a free-to-play game 
There's a battle pass coming out later in the month. There's a store with items that kind of rotates around. There's two different currencies, one you earn in game and one you can pay real money for. And all of that stuff, to be honest, I don't mind it. I think it'd be fine if it was a free to play game. But instead, it's a £30 game or $30 in the USA because they don't understand currency exchange rates, I guess. But all of this together means there's actually quite a high barrier of entry to a game that isn't being advertised in the first place and then hits you with loads of microtransactions when you load it up. Even on launch day, I'm having quite long waits for matchmaking in lots of the modes, and I've seen the same players over and over in loads of my games. It's kind of hard to imagine this game keeping and even getting in the first place a decent population who stick with it if they don't advertise it or if they don't make it go free to play. It's even cross-play, so you'd think actually there'd be loads of people playing and it'd be really easy to find a game at the moment. But I just don't think people know about it, and then if they do hear about it, rather than checking it out like they would if it's free to play, Instead, they're like, oh, it's 30 quid, I'm not bothering with that. When there's plenty of amazing free-to-play games that are kind of similar in some way, that have that kind of team-based competitive multiplayer. It is a real shame, because Rocket Arena's a genuinely fun and well-made game, but it feels a bit like EA have brought it out to die rather than throwing their support behind it. If I were the devs behind this game, I'd be pretty angry at EA for just abandoning it and not advertising it or not pushing it at all. And it's hard not to imagine that maybe EA had something um, behind charging 30 quid for it and having all the microtransaction stuff. It seems a little bit uh, money grabbing really in a way that I think is just going to harm the game more than anything. Hopefully it will get a new lease of life and it'll get a free-to-play version later. Like, this is what happened to Fortnite. And Fortnite, when it came out, wasn't that great. There wasn't much content you had to pay for it. Once they started adding a lot more features to it and then made it free-to-play, that's when it really exploded. So I think there's still a chance for this game, and I really hope that that happens. But at the moment, I can't say that it's really worth £30. Watch some streams, watch some videos. If you've got a group of free friends and you all really want to play this, then I think you could have a lot of fun in it. And... If you want to get like really good at a game, this is probably quite a good game to start with because there's not going to be that many competitors. You could absolutely dominate this game if you tried hard enough. Um, but if you're just sort of on the fence, I'd wait a while, wait for it to go on sale, wait to see if maybe it does go free to play, wait to see if the server populations keep up high enough because this game could end up just kind of dying early, which would be a real shame. So if you enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe, leave a comment below, let me know what you think of the game, let me know if there's any other games that you want me to take a look at, because I haven't done many reviews on this channel so far, um, originally that's all I used to want to do, but I haven't done that many because I've been preoccupied with Call of Duty stuff, so if you do want to see more reviews, please do let me know and I'll try and make time to do some more of them. Go follow me over on Twitch, that would really help me out, and I'll see you soon, goodbye. Go!